Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm gonna be going over some easy little quick tips as well as a checklist to go over before you enter every single trade or your trading strategy, in other words, right? So in this trading strategy, it's gonna be a very cookie cutter, simple trading strategy that most people do start off with and usually work with everybody, no matter what your trading strategy is right now or what your level of knowledge is when it comes to trading. This is gonna be very simple and it's something you guys could apply or maybe take a little, you know, take two or three things off that checklist and apply it to your own checklist. Now, the first thing that I always have on my checklist or my training strategy is doing a top-down analysis all the way from the daily or weekly time frame all the way down to the 15-minute chart. And then what I do there is I draw out my support, resistance, and trend lines. Now, after I draw out my support, resistance, and trend lines, what I do next is see whether I'm going to be going for a buy or a sell. And it's super simple to do that. All I do is, well, the trend is my friend. So I try to make sure that my trade is going aligned with the trend, unless I'm taking counter-trend trade, but... I'll get more into that into another video, but the basic thought process of going with the trend is you know where the general direction of price is going. That way you overall can't be too wrong on your bias. So if it's an uptrend, you'll be looking for buys. If it's a downtrend, you'll be looking for sells. Now, the third thing that I would like to add on to that is you do want a little bit of fundamental analysis into your trade bias, just for the fact that you don't want to be into a US 30 trade or a gold trade or a GJ trade and then have some news come out to where out of nowhere, instead of the trade going into your favor, there are some news catalysts that comes out and it actually you know, skyrockets the trade in the opposite direction. You have no idea why that happened. Usually what happens with a lot of new traders, they're not aware of Forex Factory or other news outlets that they could actually check or keep up with in order to check for all these economical data. So it's very important as a trader to be well-rounded to the point where you don't have too many other factors that can affect your trade, whether it's you know going for a buy or a sell, or even just having the background knowledge of saying, hey, you know what? Maybe I should sit this trade out just for a little longer because I do have NFP or I have Jerome Powell speaking or FOMC. All these are economical events or data points that will be coming out during the months or weeks to come by. And it's just very important for you as a trader to be informed of all these things. GJ and all the other pairs have a bunch of different economical data points and events that do come out and are important to keep up with. Now, another thing that I do like to keep up with, or at least add into a basic trading strategy is make sure that your entries are very optimal. These two little things I have all added on the checklist that I will share with you guys and pop it up on the screen here or on the computer when I actually go back in there and dive into what a support resistance trend line looks like, as well as what a reasonable trade to take, which we're gonna do that shortly. So the fourth thing on the checklist for very simple things are, is your price gonna be between your support resistance area or between a trend line? All that means is, right, is there gonna be a break of structure and a retest and that is where your entry is gonna be? Main reason being, whenever you're looking for the best optimal entry, obviously there is no perfect entry, right? Just you gotta get that out of your head. There is no perfect entry. The perfect entry happened five years ago and obviously we can't predict <laughs> the future if we did. Like let's say if you had, the, the prospect of what the next two years are going to look like, then obviously you'll get in now because you obviously know what's going to, what's to come. But basically all that means by getting in a support or resistance level is right. Let's say you're within two ranges. Let's say you want to get in for a buy. Obviously you want to get in when price is cheaper. If you're going to go in for a buy, cause you're longing the position. So you don't want to be getting in at the support level rather than the resistance level, right? Cause if you get at a resistance level, then there might be only this much room for you to play with or even have profit before you run into some trouble which can be a little roadblock of a resistance level or a support level if you're going for a sell. Now, what I mean by going in for a trade of a break of structure and retest is basically, right, I'll do it on the computer so you guys can have a better idea of it, but it's between two ranges, right? Let's say if you're going for a buy, it does break structure, so it'll break out of the resistance area, and then it'll just come back down to retest the resistance area and make that a new support area. And then that's when you'd wanna get in and be optimal to the point where you could capture that whole entire move rather than getting in at least optimal or getting in right where there might be a fake out, right? Because fake outs are also a thing that you wanna be careful for whenever you are trading because this does get a lot of new traders and you end up going the wrong direction rather than the right direction with the trade. I hope that makes sense. But regardless, I am gonna go on the computer right now and show you guys live examples of all these things. That way you guys have a better idea and illustration of what it actually looks like. All right, guys, so now we're back on the computer and I want to do a little top down analysis for you guys and show you guys what that actually looks like. It's pretty simple. All I do is I go on the weekly first, right? Top down. Whole point is to go from higher time frames to a lower time frame. That way you can get like a better image of what price has been doing and what it will possibly will be doing. So 
on the weekly we have been in this channel that's been rising even though once you go down to the lower time frame you start seeing that there has been some sluggish movement to where price slows down and does come back down and that's why we have this trend line right here and the main reason we have this trend line which is so far out on the weekly is just so we have it as a point of interest right this is a point a uh, point where price rejected this area and it came back up so we just want to have that drawn up for future references for when price does get around this area or if it doesn't then that's perfectly fine then we have our point of interest up here so what i'm going to do on the daily which is where i like to draw up my major support and resistance areas would be exactly that i'll draw my resistance area here you're going to see that price is very comfortable here right there's a lot of price action going on in this range right here and of course it ultimately rejected right here same way with the double top here another double top here and these are all on the daily so this is a very very solidified resistance area ever since then we have noticed that we are selling off so instead of having a bias of looking for buys on the weekly we're actually going to start looking for more sells right so we're going to be more more short oriented than than long so now all i'm going to do actually here i'll drop this support area too if it wasn't obvious enough from the trend line but i'm actually going to drop another support area over here which is a little closer we'll drop red for i mean green for support and we'll do red for resistance now coming down to the four hour we can see all that short all that shorting pressure and in reality where we got this rejection up here and started coming back down so now that we know that oh obviously the overall trend on the weekly was uh, I had did have a buy bias. We are actually seeing that there is a shift between the four hour and the ten and the one day that there's there's major shorting going on in the market. And basically, all that means is that there's a lot more sellers than buyers at the moment. So we're actually going to switch our bias to sells, right? Because that's what price is doing. And there's a lot of price uh, movement towards the downside rather than the upside. With that said, now we want to draw a uh, draw a range between the four hour and the one hour. All I mean by that is another support and resistance area. So that's going to be a resistance area, actually. Move that to red. And the only reason that's a resistance area is because, right, this was once a support area that became a resistance area once price rejected the area and did not want to no, uh, did not no longer want to go back up there. Now, what we're also going to do is since price has been selling off, ultimately we do want to see where price is going to come down to or maybe slow down to where we could possibly look for an entry. Right, this is another area right here which could be a support area. And the only reason it's support area, as you can see right here, there's a lot of body formation right here and candle wicks that have been rejected here that became a support area. So price found a little floor right here and then started moving back up, right? From the sell off, bounce, keep going up. So ultimately that's where we see price going down right here for US 30 currently. Of course, this is December 19th. So you do have Christmas weekend coming up, low volume in the market overall, but just for a reference for you guys to have what a top-down analysis is we started at the weekly went down to the daily went down to the four hour now we're actually going to go down to the one hour and see what we see there on the one hour exactly that we are out of session right now it is 10 36 p.m so there's not much going on in the market right now probably won't really see any big movement till tomorrow morning now in the one hour what you could actually tell is that price has found like a little support area right here so what I like to do once I see that is like, okay, well, was there a support area previously and any later price action, which there was, you can see that price consolidated right here. And I'll draw, I'll draw a little box for you guys to get a little representation of that, right? So price consolidated right here. And you can even bring this back to where price consolidated here and you can keep bringing it back. And that's not a coincidence. That's just price action was comfortable there or found support there or resistance. So ultimately now, Let's actually go to the four hours so you can see it a little better. We'll drag this all the way over here. And now we see that we have a new um, point of interest for price to actually come down to. Ultimately, what we will be seeing is, let's say, if let's move this out of the way. Let's say we do see price come all the way down here. Let's draw, let's move the support area up over here since that was the most recent. All right. <clears throat> that was resistance, support. Beautiful. So... To give you guys an example of break of structure or retest is going to be, this is what we're going to want price to do, but obviously if it doesn't do it, then that's perfectly fine. 
we you know here we like to react to the market rather than predict the market so ultimately let's say if the price does continue to, to fall below this area what you'd want to see in order to get in right because you would not want to be getting in right here because you do realize this is an established support area so you don't want to get in right here because you have the chance of price doing this no no that's not that's not it you have the chance of price doing this right and then that that's not good you don't want you don't want to get in right here where it's going to be just a, a very sloppy position to where you're going to be in drawdown the majority of it even though you might be in profit for a little bit the overall picture isn't the this overall isn't a good entry now an example of a better entry is going to be a break of structure and retest so now let's say price does break out of the structure breaks past that, uh, that support area now what you want to see to get in is you want to see it retest that support area to where it became a resistance area and the reason you want to do that is because instead of for example let's use a little tool right here where we have short position let's say we get in right here you have to realize that you're already at a support area right so let's say if you wanted to bring this down to another support area which would be down here would be a one to four overall you don't really have much room you don't really have that much leg room if you really want to get a one to four here which would be a great trade honestly but the problem is that right price can do exactly what i had said where you know it comes down here continue support um respecting the support area and then bounce back up right because then that would be another retest right you'll end up retesting this resistance area up here and the main reason we want to use the horizontal lines are basically just to have a, a view of where price could be going so now we're now we have now we narrow the actual range down to a closer price action that we could actually depict whether we want to get in or not currently currently right now right now is not the best time to get in you either want one or two things to happen you want price to break structure retest and then get in here and capture this whole one to four but the whole reason i say you want to get in here rather than up here is just for the fact that hey once it breaks out of structure and retests this level and it rejects this level what you're going to see price do is you're going to see price Let's move that away. You're gonna see price do something like this, right? Break a structure, retest, then come all the way down. That's a way cleaner move than being up here and having this risk, right? Because at the end of the day, this is a support area, which we still have right here. We could still pull this out and you could still see on the one hour that there's been a lot of support in this area before. So you don't wanna play those odds. Remember, you always wanna take a trade where the odds are in your favor or skewed more towards you than any other possibility that could happen in the market so we'll clean that up i usually what i like to do is once i have once i already pinpointed like a direction that i want price to go or i'm or i would like price to go to i start getting rid of all the other noise right so i actually didn't go over any of these indicators because i don't want you guys to get used to using a lot of indicators because a lot of people become very reliant on indicators and then don't know what price structure is or how to read price structure or candle formation and that's just not good for you. Another quick tip that what I would do once I do this is I would go out zoom out a little bit more and then I'll ultimately see what other areas of price points that I like to, to look at. So another support area will be right here. Let's move this to red since that's the resistance area. <clears throat> so once price breaks out of here, I would want to see price come back down here. Obviously we're super zoomed out, but that's just a better view for me. And that's the whole point of having a top down now. So you have a very broad view of what's going on. So right here, I'll drop that exact position, which this is a viable position to take. This is exactly what it would look like on my end if I were to take this. If I were to take this is exactly, yeah, this is, this is a trade I would take if I were to get into a trade. But of course, another thing to add onto your checklist or your trading strategy is to be very disciplined on whether you're trading out of session or in session. I never ever want to take a trade when I'm out of session because volume is very low and I just don't want to mess with that. Because then you get stuck with consolidation. You don't want to ever trade a market that's consolidating unless that's your trading strategy and you're a little bit of a scalper. But for the most part, that's pretty much it, right? There's many other examples that you can do, but you already have your broad view. You went on your weekly, you did your thing, right? On the weekly, it did look like we were in a nice, uptrend but at the end of the day we did break structure here we failed to make a higher high but we just like having this point drawn out because it's a point of interest not because we we're going to go with this bias of being 
a buy. Same thing for the daily. You see this uptrend. That's perfectly fine. We only did this for points of interest. Same way, right? We'll see resistance up here, which is another thing you'd want to draw out. But we're so far away from that that there's no real point having that drawn out. At the end of the day, you try, you kind of want to keep your chart very clean and very simple. The more minimalistic, the better, just because there's less noise and less things to stress yourself out over, especially when you're first starting to trade. And these little rectangle tools help out a lot. What I also used to do to help me out in the beginning, just to have an idea of where price would be, is let me remove all these drawings. Is I would grab a little rectangle. Here, where is it? Right here. So what I'll do is I'll grab a little rectangle. And I'll actually grab from the opening of the day before and I'll actually move. I actually like to do two days. <clears throat> that way I know where price has been in the past, you know, two days. Now, with that said, once you come down to the four hour time frame, now you know this little box right here is about two to three days worth of data right here. So you know where price has been the last two to three days. And that's that's amazing, right? Because Let's say if the market is consolidating, then you know your perfect range. You have your resistance and support area right here, perfectly drawn out for you without having to go through the hassle of doing the top down analysis, or in case you just wanted to have this cleared out for a better view. Overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I am going to do some more in depth videos of TAs as well as another strategy that you guys could use with indicators. But overall, I'd rather have you guys learn how to, you know, create structure, not create structure, but pinpoint structure and use structure toward your advantage rather than use indicators and rely on all that stuff that are not really needed. I do have strategies with indicators that I tend to use, but for the most part, I ignore them because it's not really needed. You don't need indicators or a million different indicators. There's no magical indicator that's going to make you a successful trader. This is going to be for all your fundamental analysis. All that means is you want to take an analysis on economical data or news events that might be affecting your pairs. I'll leave the link for Forex Factory on the description of the video so you guys can check out. But basically, this is a great tool for every trader to have. Obviously, today it's a little late, but there wasn't any news events going on for, for USD or Euro that I usually trade. So let's look at tomorrow, for example. Tomorrow we have a JPY, tentative news. VOJ press conference, nothing for USD again. You do have Euro, German, PPI, not a big deal. But here, if you guys do want more details on the, the actual news, you just click on it and it's actually going to tell you what it measures, right? Change in price of goods sold by manufacturers. And it will even tell you the usual effect, right? Actual greater than forecast is good for currency. So usually right here, you're going to see the actual forecast and previous. That way you guys have this data to go off of to know how to read the actual data that comes in. Now, with this said, you have actual greater than forecast, right? So in November, you had your actual, which was negative 4.2% and the forecast was 0.9%. So this was bad. Obviously, it's displayed in red for that reason. So all that means is that we underperformed. Well, not we, but you're underperformed on that aspect. And this is very important to know whenever you're training these pairs, because sometimes you have crazy volatility that might even happen. So actually, here, I'm going to show you guys a quick little example. Uh, pretty sure GJ, right? So look, GJ, right? Let's go, let's look over here. Okay, I don't know why that happened, but that's tomorrow, today. You had JPY, right? At 10.01 p.m., it's 10.53. This is a reason why Forex Factory and your fundamental analysis is so important. Monetary uh, policy statement. So because of that, you had this massive drop right here. It's about a 400 pip drop, which is absolutely insane. But let's say if you were going in for a buy bias right here and you wanted to go for a long, this would have ruined your position completely. It would have blown straight through your stop loss and the account would have ended up in a pretty bad drawdown situation. But <clears throat> since you are a very savvy and responsible trader, I'm sure that you would have checked your Forex factory and seen that this news event was tentative and was coming out at 10 o'clock. So you would have been worried about that. And this is just literally a perfect example of why you got to be careful. Now, with that said, you could always use this towards your advantage, right? You, let's say if you did want to look, if you were looking for a short here, then you would have entered super quick off of that news. I don't ever recommend trading news events just because the spread on the actual brokerages gets so crazy that it actually affects you big time. So usually you'll end up having double, triple, or even four to five times more drawdown because of the spread that the actual broker is offering because of the massive volume that happens at that time. 
Anyways, that concludes the video. I'm 100% sure I went over everything I needed to go over. Like I said, I am gonna be leaving a link to Forest Factory down below so you guys can check it out and have access to all this information. It is free. You don't even need to make an account. As you can tell, I'm not even logged in just because there's no point. I don't, there's no need for an account for this. And you could even, you know, go months ahead as well, right? Let's say you wanted to go check the new years and how January's gonna look, you can do that. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And now for sure, I'm signing out and good luck, guys.